For 10 months, the Russian Air Force's heavy bombers have pummeled Ukrainian cities with impunity, launching cruise missiles from hundreds of miles away, or even, in a few cases, flying directly over the besieged port of Maripol to drop unguided bombs. Now Ukraine seems to have found a way to hit back. Satellite imagery published by ImageSat International shows a damaged Tu-22M3 backfire bomber at the Diagolivo Air Base. The bombers have been used to blast targets in Ukraine to cripple the electrical grid. The attack took place near Ryazan, a city less than 150 miles or 240 kilometers from Moscow. Images that have emerged on social media in the past hours show one seriously damaged Tu-22M3 and pools of blood near it. In addition to the bomber, a support truck was also damaged. It's worth noting that the photo shows a KH-22 missile suspended on a bomber, indicating that it was probably getting ready to strike targets in Ukraine. As per reports, three service members were fatally injured, while four more were taken to military hospitals for treatment. In this video, Defense Updates analyzes how Ukraine managed to damage Tu-22M3 backfire bomber deep inside Russia. Let's get into the details. This video is sponsored by NordVPN. Get an exclusive NordVPN deal by going to nordvpn.com defense or clicking the link in the description. Use the code DEFENSE at the checkout to get an extra month free for the two-year plan. It's risk-free with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. Tu-22M is a Cold War-era designed aircraft. The aircraft was first flown on the 30th of August, 1969, and was introduced in service in 1972. During the Cold War, Soviet Air Force used the aircraft as a missile carrier for the strategic bombing role and long-range maritime anti-shipping role. It's a supersonic and heavy bomber with a variable sweep wing design. The bomber can reach speeds of Mach 1.88 and has a range of around 6,800 kilometers or 4,225 miles. Russia built about 497 Tu-22M bombers, but currently around 70 are in use. The bomber has gone through an extensive upgrade program and is designated as Tu-22M3. The enhancements include new navigation, communication, and targeting equipment. Radio electronic warfare means, as well as more efficient engines. Tu-22M3 is able to carry many different types of weapons, including freefall bombs, smart bombs, as well as cruise missiles. The two particularly significant weapons are the KH-22 anti-ship missile and Kinzhal hypersonic missile. The KH-22 Burya, or Storm, is a Soviet-era anti-ship missile. The development of this missile began back in 1958. It has a range of around 600 kilometers or 320 nautical miles. The main role of the KH-22 was to destroy U.S. aircraft carriers and carrier battle groups using its nuclear warhead. Soon after its introduction, various versions of the KH-22 were developed. Some of the versions were designed to engage surface targets. During the early 2000s, the KH-22 missiles were removed from active service and were put into storage. However, now KH-22 with conventional warheads is being widely used against Ukrainian targets. Kinzhal is designed to take out high-value land targets as well as has an anti-ship capability. The defining features of the missile are its Mach 10 speed and in-flight maneuverability, a combination of which makes it almost immune to current anti-missile defense systems. It's been used in combat for the first time in Ukraine. It has a range of around 2,000 kilometers or around 1,240 miles. Anton Gerashenko, an advisor to Ukraine's Ministry of Internal Affairs, has claimed that drones of an undisclosed type were responsible for the explosion on at least one of the two airbases. 
The Kremlin claimed air defenses intercepted the incoming drones. The damage and casualties were the results of the fall and explosion of fragments, it alleged. It may be true, but it doesn't make the Ukrainian raid any less successful. Wrecked bombers and killed personnel don't care if they were hit by wreckage or an intact drone. Some experts think that Ukraine used a modified Jubilev Tu-141 Strizh. It's a Soviet reconnaissance drone that historically served with the Soviet Army during the late 1970s and 1980s. The drone can carry a range of payloads, including film cameras, infrared imagers, EO imagers, and imaging radar. As with previous Tupolev designs, it has a dart-like rear-mounted delta wing, forward-mounted canards, and a KR-17A turbojet engine mounted above the tail. It's launched from a trailer using a solid propellant booster and lands with the aid of a tail-mounted parachute. The particular Tu-22M3 would most likely be grounded for months. Russians would have to completely replace that whole tail, and that engine probably will need to be replaced or rebuilt. While the damage to a single bomber may not look like much, it has far-reaching implications. This attack is actually a key moment in this conflict. It's evident now that Ukraine's counter-airfield campaign is reaching deeper and deeper into Russia, putting at risk some of the Kremlin's most valuable assets. For the Russians, it's a troubling development. To date, most of the Ukrainian attacks on Russian air bases have been limited to locations much closer to Ukraine's borders, in occupied Crimea or in areas of Russia within far easier reach by improvised kamikaze drones or short-range ballistic missiles. On the other hand, hits on Russian air bases sitting deeper inside Russia have apparently involved small teams of saboteurs. Russia might now have to deploy additional assets to defend against these threats, which are deep in Russian territory, away from Ukraine's borders and front lines. This of course is also a psychological victory for Ukraine. Subscribe for more videos like this, hit the like button if you find the video interesting, and kindly provide your feedback in the comment section. This will help us improve.